In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to obtain aerial information. Aerial data is important to us because it gives us basic information on the types of land use and land coverage there is for our area of interest. We can also use it as a frame of reference to locate data geospatially. If we log in and explore www.kansasgis.org and locate catalog and imagery and raster over here on the left side, we notice that our aerial information comes in several formats. For right now, I'm just going to be interested in the year. I'm going to look for the latest year, and I'm going to look for 2010. And the reason why I'm choosing 2010 because earlier I noticed that we also have some 2010 LIDAR. In the case of this particular demonstration or study site that we're looking at, the year doesn't really matter because the site hasn't changed that much. But if you're working with a site that has changed year after year after year, you definitely want to make sure that your aerial and your LIDAR will chronologically match up. So for in this example, we're just going to stick with 2010. And usually the, the later the year, the newer the year, 2012 versus 2010, your 2012 data will have a little bit higher resolution than the 2010. And the reason is because as time progresses, the technology for capturing aerial imagery gets a little bit better. So for now, we're just going to stick with 2010. So I'm going to click on 2010. And as soon as I do that, this middle area here changes. So it tells me about the tiling scheme, the projection datum. I'm going to go over here to the File Download tab. And we notice that our format is in MRSID. And this is typically pronounced Mr. SID. It stands for Multi-Resolution Seamless Image Database and it will typically have the file extension of SID. Mr. SID was originally developed for GIS and allows you to quickly view aerial or satellite imagery without having to decompress the entire file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on downloadable files and as soon as I do that the first thing I immediately notice are these little abbreviations here on the left side and this is the abbreviation by county. So the county that our study site is located in is in Riley County. So I'm going to be going scrolling down to the RL section. This is an alphabetical. So this is the one that I'm interested in. This RL underscore 2010 NAIP dot ZIP file. So seeing this listed by county, this is a pretty common way that counties usually do this, or states usually do this. So the state of Kansas this is pretty common and for the state that you might be working out of or doing research in it's going to be pretty common to see this, see the data listed by county. Before I start downloading anything the first thing I need to do is set up my file management which we've covered a little bit earlier. So I'm going to go to computer and I'm going to figure out where I'm going to save my data to. It's going to go to my projects directory and I actually have a file management template that I use so I'm just going to right click on this, select copy, right click here, and select paste. And all my template is, is just it has folders already set up within it, so I don't have to make any. So I have an Adobe folder, CAD folder, Docs, GIS, Image, Mac, SketchUp, Source, View. There's no like files in here, it's just all strictly folders. So I'm going to right click on this and choose rename, and I'm going to call this Marlet Park because that's the name of my project site. So now I have a Marlet Park directory here and within my GIS directory I have some more folders set up here. There's no actual files in the folders, it's just strictly folders to just help me make sure that I save things where they need to be saved to so I don't have files all over the place. And that's pretty important with GIS because GIS usually is just not one single file a single download may have a half a dozen to, to a dozen companion files associated with it. So you want to keep things pretty organized and keep things pretty much together. So now that I have my file management here set up where I'm going to store things into, so I've created this Marlet Park directory within my projects directory. And all I use is my file management template. So now I have my Marlet Park directory set up. 
I have my JS directory. I'm going to download all of my source data into this source directory. So in this source directory, since I'm downloading from Dask, I'm going to create a new folder in here. I'm just going to right click, get a new, and choose folder. And I'm going to call this Dask, because that's where the data came from. Double click in here, and create another new folder, and this time I'm just going to click the new folder button up here at the top. And I'm going to call this Arial, that way I know what it is. I'm going to give it a year, this is 2010. And this is where I'm going to download my Arial data to, into this Dask folder. So I'm going to go back to my Dask website. I'm going to look for RL again right here. I'm just going to click on this. I get a prompt to where I want to save it. I'm going to navigate to my D drive where my projects directory is located. And I'm going to stick it in my Marlet Park directory. And it's going to go into source. Actually GIS. There's two source directories. So you got to be careful. I'm going to go into GIS and then go into source and then into Dask and then into Arial. So you can see up here at the top it's going on to my D drive, projects, Marlet Park, GIS, Source, Dask, Arial 2012. I'm going to save it in here. I'm just going to click Save. You can see down here at the bottom at Google Chrome, it's going to take about 16 minutes to download. It just completed download. So down here in Google Chrome, I can click on this arrow and choose Show Open Files of this, or Show in Folder, not that one. I'm going to click on show in folder or I can just navigate out to where I downloaded it to which is in here and I have 7-zip installed and I usually like to use 7-zip to unzip large file types so that there won't be any corruption or any kind of problems so I'm just going to right click on this go to 7-zip and then roll my mouse over to extract here it has that SID file format. Once it completes extraction, I'm going to go ahead and open ArcMap. So I'm going to start, go to All Programs, go to ArcGIS, I'm going to click on ArcMap. Right now, I'm not going to concern myself too much about creating a geodatabase or where the geodatabase is stored. All I want to do right now is make sure what I downloaded covers my area of interest. The data is not corrupted, it actually opens and what I downloaded is what I actually need. So I'm just going to, for here, I'm just going to click cancel. And then over here at the table of contents, I'm going to right click on layers and I'm going to click add data. And then I need to navigate out to where I downloaded it to. So right now I don't see my drive here. So I need to create a folder connection. So if I double click on folder connections, I actually do have a D drive. If you don't have your drive showing up here, you'll have to go over here where it says connect to folder and then choose your D drive. So for example, let's just pretend that I want to have my E drive listed there. I would have to click on E and then click OK. Then if I click up one level, I see now my D and my E under my folder connection. So if you don't have anything under your folder connection, that's what you'll need to do. So in my case, I already have my D, so I'm going to double click on D, and I'm going to go to Projects, and I'm going to go to Marlet Park, and I'm going to go to GIS, and Source, Dask, Arial, and I'm going to grab this RL2010NAIP.SID file and click Add. And it adds it to my data frame. So what I'll need to do now is actually try to locate where that site is at. And I know from Google Earth, it's around here somewhere within this vicinity. So I'm just going to zoom in there, see if I can find it. And it's this thing right here. So I can already tell from looking at my aerial that I definitely downloaded the correct thing because I can see that my project site is located here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a really, really rough area of interest. So down here I have my drawing toolbar and I'm going to click on this rectangle and it's just going to be really, really rough. It's not even going to be nowhere near exact. So I'm just going to draw a box that pretty much covers 
my area of interest. And right now it's a solid box, I can't see through it. So I'm going to right click on it while I have it selected. And I can tell I have it selected because I have these little handles here. If I click off of it, it's deselected. If I click on it, I see the handles that come back. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to change the symbology so I can actually see through the box. So where it says fill, I'm going to choose no color. And then for the outline, maybe I'll make it something that stands out so that I can see it. And maybe I'll make the line a little bit thicker. And then click OK. Now if I click off of it, I can see that I want to make sure that all of my data is going to fit with inside this box. Well, at least covers the content of this box here, within this box. There's several other things that I notice here. Over here in my table of contents, I notice I have a red, green, and blue color band, which is good. If I right click on this, and I'm just going to choose properties. And all I'm doing is I'm just exploring my data. I'm just going to click on each of these tabs, click on source, I'm going to scroll down here. This gives me information about the source. I can see that the linear measurement is in meters, and it's in this spatial reference. I'm going to right click on that again and go to properties. Look at extents, display, symbology. And I have my red, green, blue. And all I'm doing is I'm just exploring these tabs. I'm not doing making any changes or anything. I'm looking for anything that might error or crash. These are the kind of problems that I want to find now. I don't want to find these kind of problems later when I'm in the middle of doing my analysis. So it didn't crash or do anything weird. There's nothing missing. So everything appears to be here. So I'm going to say that this aerial download was successful.